Hello my friends, today we are going to be doing a book review. Why? Because this book right here is due back tomorrow in the library. <laughs> remember that uh, on a previous book review video I mentioned that I was going to talk about uh, a book that would be better for beginners to read. This is not that book. Not at all. <laughs> I just got, you know, figured I'd do this video while I still have the book around. This book right here, this is what I actually suggest for beginners. It's called A History of Art in Africa. And uh, if it helps to find it online, the authors include Vizona, Ponyar, Cole, Harris, Abiodun, and Blair. Those uh, viewers of mine who've watched quite a few of my videos have probably seen me show this book before. Anyway, eventually we'll do a review of that. But... I own this thing, so I can take my time on that review. Whereas the other book I'm holding has to be returned to the library. Um, another book that some of my viewers have been anticipating me talking about is this uh, Black Panther uh, book, which I mentioned at the very end of my Black Panther review video. That'll come in time, uh, but I would like to pace out my Black Panther content. I mean, it's for kind of obvious reasons. You want, like, a diversity of content on your YouTube channel. And if you're wondering why it's still sealed, it's because I'd like to open this on screen with all of you uh, so we can, you know, have a first reaction to it together. At least that's the plan. I don't know if I'm going to stick with that, but that's the plan anyway. Either way, we will have a video about this book eventually. Alright, so we will be talking, of course, about this book today. And this book could be read for uh, by beginners, certainly. Um, but I do recommend the other book instead because... Uh, uh, this hefty giant right here covers the entire continent. Uh, north... West, East, South, Central, Madagascar, everything. Whereas this one uh, covers West, Central, and a little bit of East. Uh, another reason why I would uh, recommend beginners check this one out first uh, is because uh, this one was uh, what I was assigned in college. Uh, this, it's from my college library, so I guess it's still a college book, in a way. But I never use this in the classroom. So, um, that's another reason. Uh, and the third reason is I just fondly remember this one more. And I feel like it's just better. Alrighty, let's delve into this book, shall we? So as you can see in this map, the cultures that are discussed in this book range from, again, West, Central, and East Africa. Um, but they don't really cover South or North or Madagascar. Honestly, there's a lot of books that don't cover Madagascar. Uh, and frankly, uh, when it comes to African art books, a lot of uh, books you'll find will concentrate on West and Central. Um, it's just how it is, and that's another reason why I was saying the other book is better for beginners because it covers, it tries to cover, uh, the entire continent. Of course, you can't fit the entire continent into one book, but my point is, it introduces aspects of every part of the continent. So, that one, great for beginners. This one, pretty good too, though. Um, I remember there being a couple of things in this book that I was a bit like, eh, about, but, um, I can't actually remember what those were, so I'm sure they weren't very major gripes if I can't even remember 
what those gripes were. I've been reading this uh, one over a pretty extended uh, period of time uh, because I've pretty much had to been really busy lately making videos and uh, working on other projects um, but yeah so that said I do remember enjoying most of this book and I actually have a couple more pages I have to finish reading before I bring this thing back to the library but uh, I'm pretty sure those last few pages aren't going to uh, change my opinion of the book that drastically uh, so yeah so pretty much right after I finish this review I'm probably gonna finish those last few pages I haven't read yet so let's talk about some of the cool things in this book these Bijogo masks from Guinea-Bissau I find uh, quite fascinating uh, because it says in this book and it does mention this in some of the other books I've seen cover these masks but in this book it actually mentions that they are sometimes worn by women and that's fascinating to me uh, because I've been kind of searching to find how many masks are actually worn by women uh, and the reason why is a lot of uh, sources will say that the Sunday Bondo Society masks are the only masks in Africa that are worn by women but uh, this disproves that okay this disproves that and there's also uh, one mask from South Africa that also disproves that. Um, I have that saved uh, as an image somewhere, I believe. But yes, that's another um, uh, mask worn by women. I just always find it interesting when I find uh, another mask that is worn by women since there are so many sources out there that will say, no, it's just the San De Bondo Society. Lies. Um, so yeah, I know of at least three. And, and thanks to this book, I know of at least three. I used to know of two, now I know of three. And I'm, I might make a whole video about those uh, f female masks. Uh, we'll see. No, I'm definitely going to do it, actually. But uh, I'm still deciding on how I'm going to do it. More than likely, we will discuss these female masks in more detail when we uh, do a particular uh, game ritual episode I have planned. Yeah, you remember that uh, series of, I started like months back? I do plan to do more of those. The episode I plan to do for that is a merger of Samus Aran uh, from Metroid, you know, the first woman of video games, with a Sunday Bondo Society mask. And while I'm doing that, I'll probably also talk about these other two masks that are worn by women as well. And who knows, maybe I'll discover another female mask by the time that episode airs. It's always possible. So here's a cool sculpture that uh, I don't believe I've seen in any other book, so let's talk about this one. This sculpture is from the Kundu of Cameroon, and the elaborate headdress that he's wearing uh, apparently uh, the four points of it allude to compass directions uh, north east west and south and uh, it also alludes to the four eyes that a hunter needs uh, while he's hunting another thing you'll notice is this side is black and this side is white and that alludes to the visible world and the invisible world uh, and also life and death. Apparently this uh, would have in its original context be holding a spear, a net, and probably would have had some clothes. And this sculpture would have been used in a dance of a particular secret society. Uh, the sculpture would have likely been placed in the center of where the men would dance or another possibility they say is that it might have been carried but because this is such a large sculpture it's more than likely that it was in the center of the dance floor so yeah that's a cool tidbit f uh, from this book that I don't remember ever seeing in any other African art book of course now that I say that I'll probably see it in a bunch of other African art books <laughs> 
Here's another very interesting uh, artwork. Can you guess what this actually is? I'll give you a moment to think about it. It's actually a drinking vessel. Yeah, you actually drink out of this thing. Now, this, of course, would not be your typical everyday cup. This was only for ceremonial use. It was kept in a special wooden box, and from what I understand, it would have uh, been used during like such uh, ceremonies as a king's initiation. So, yeah, it is a very, very fancy cup. Very cool. This artwork right here is from the Zaramu. It's from Tanzania specifically. A uh, very interesting piece. You might notice it has uh, various uh, joints on it, much like a marionette, because that is apparently what it was inspired by. Uh, there are a few uh, puppets and marionettes in Africa, though they're kind of rare. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to point this one out. However, this, uh, I'm not actually certain if it was actually ever used as a puppet because it explains that this is actually a grave marker. Um, so, I don't know if it was ever actually, you know, manipulated. Uh, it might have been, but it doesn't really go into too much detail of, about that in the book. Perhaps the um, author of the book doesn't know whether it was uh, moved around in such a way but yeah there are a number of uh, very fascinating looking grave markers throughout East Africa um, and this is a very interesting looking example so while making this review there is something I noticed that I do have to uh, or at least I feel like I have to address which uh, this book uh, makes the mistake of uh, missing out on its very last page oddly enough they reprinted page 234 on two separate pages and now on that second page should have been page 235 the reason why that's an issue is it winds up uh, making us miss out on the description of these wonderful East African sculptures here, which should have been described on that last page. Now I actually checked online and there was at least one other person who complained about this, so it's not just a misprint in my book, it's a misprint on other books as well. So. I don't know if it's only some and maybe perhaps other versions of this book do have that fixed but some of the prints of this book have a missing last page now I'm not saying that makes the whole book terrible I mean as I've been uh, showing it's got plenty of great information but I felt it was necessary to let you all know about that um, Eventually, I might try to uh, look online for those four particular uh, sculptures uh, just because, you know, I'm still interested in seeing what their story is. Um, but yeah, it's a bit of a shame, but uh, let's move on. So let's end off this review video with a quote from the book itself so that you can get a sense for how the writing style is. Uh, in particular, we are going to read about the Lukwa Congo mask and shoulder bag, which is from the Liga people of the Democratic Republic of Congo. I think this is a pretty interesting artwork to end with. The book states about this artwork, The typical Liga masquette is slightly ovoid in contour, with narrow bulging forehead, concave face, open rectangular eye slits in light relief, broad nose dividing the face into two similar planes, large nostrils, an ovoid mouth, and a set of perforations along the rim. The fiber beard, Luzelu, which would be fixed to the perforations around the mask, is missing. 
The mask is linked as a status and initiation object with the second highest grade in the Boami Association. It belongs to the Lua Congo category of masks, and since it is somewhat larger than the average masquette of this type, it may have been owned by a perceptor, Nisingia. This person is a high-ranking initiate who leads the dances and has superior knowledge of all initiation procedures. In the Buami rites, there are many different ways in which this mask is used. Fixed to a fence, carried in the hand, placed in a pile of masks and or other initiation objects, sometimes worn either on the side of the head or on the forehead so that the beard partly covers the face. In the multiple contexts of usages, masks of this type may represent many diverse characters, in addition to representing elders, Bakulu, and their various modes, and being tokens left by the ancestors, Nondo Za Balinu, which literally means hammers of the spirits, and symbols of the sameness and oneness of high initiates, Tulimu Twazu Sanya, which literally means alike looking insects. The bag, generic term Nasango, is typically used by initiates to store and carry unseen some of their artworks and other paraphernalia. It is therefore called Kisango Kaya Masango. Like the mask itself and the mask's beard, the bag is the subject of numerous interpretations formulated in aphorisms, sung in dance and action context. The non-initiate is often compared to a shoulder bag that has a mouth, but no heart or core. Alrighty, so those are just a few of some of the many, many interesting uh, artworks that you can find in this particular African art book. The book does have a couple issues here and there, but for the most part, as usual, I can certainly recommend this book. It's a great book right here. Thank you for watching, and please subscribe for more.